Hi, I'm Paul Prado. Hi, I'm Phil Prado. And, and we're, we're the, the Prado, Prado Bros. Bros. What do you get when you mix silver, a wild pig, and baseball? Based in Los Angeles, California, the Prado Brothers operate out of their home garage, Prado Standard, as well as Wild Pig Pours. You would consider these two as a chef in the kitchen, mixing up, making things that are unique to the general public. In fact, these two brothers have honed their skills over 20 years in the metals business. A little bit about our childhood, to Wild Pig, to the Prado, Prado Standard. Standard. The reason behind wild pig um, as I was growing up a young boy um, my father used to take us every summer to Costa Rica and um, in Costa Rica he owned a farm and um, so I used to run around in the farm you know as an eight-year-old kid all the way through teenage years um, we used to run around and chase the pigs <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to chase the pigs. So I, I grew to love the pigs, you know, when they're injured, I used to, you know, pick up the little guys and, you know, treat them like they're little puppies and all that, right? Um, but that, at an early age, that's what influenced me on, on that name was the love for pigs. Um, and how I got the, the wild in front of that. Um, I used to actually gold mine out here in the mountains in California. And I used to sluice, um, you know, we used to do a, I don't know, like a five mile hike in. Um, and, you know, it could be rough terrain, river crossings, things like that. Um, you know, so I used to I used to do the gold mining, did that quite a few times, and then that's kind of when I got into jewelry. But that's kind of where I got the wild um, in the name Wild Pig is because I thought it was a little wild, being that you know we had to hike that high to go ahead and try and sluice for gold. All my metal experience comes from my father. He came down here from Costa Rica, and. Um, he got a job in the sheet metal industry. So as he was coming up in the game, he, you know, was working two jobs, this and that. And then he got an opportunity to, to go partnership with somebody. So he took it and then he started his own business after that one had failed and he got paid out. So as a young boy, us both, we're, we'll spend our summers at the sheet metal yeah, every company. every summer almost. <laughs> every summer. And then when I became of age, as a teenager after graduating, my dad, my father was an old school Latino man. So he wasn't about school or nothing like that. Not that school's bad or anything, but he was more about making the money. Yeah, So Work experience. Yes, yeah, so I put in at least from 17 years old to about 37 so what is that 20 years experience in the sheet metal industry anywhere from hammering cleaning um, stamping uh, punch press brake form all that stuff so that's where my experience comes in on working with silvers and it's this experience they learned by working with their father in the metal industry for several years that allows them to understand how metal works bending melting it, fabricating it to make unique items today 
that have the stamp of approval of Wild Pig Pours. Jewelry was the first thing I got involved with, and I dealt a lot with 925 jewelry. And I would sell it, you know, just to make ends meet while we're slow. And, um, you know, it got to a point where all the jewelry that I had that would not sell just kept bulking up. So I figured I would look around um, for somebody to get it melted, you know, down into a bar. So I started calling local refineries and um, they all wanted like $60 to um to make a bar and um so i did some more investigating uh i saw a video on youtube just to kind of see um you know what um crew, you know what i needed to to melt my own bar and I, I figured out that i needed a crucible and um a torch and some borax so um I decided not to get the bar made from the refinery and um, to buy my own stuff. And that's when uh, Wild Pig was born. Um, so I poured my first bar. All my earlier stuff was made from 925. Um, and then um, as you know, time went on, I started playing around with um, 999. So the process of my pouring, um, I try to use shot, and I call this pig shot. I make it myself. Um, so basically, what I do is I'll I'll um, use bars of rounds, um, and then it's all sigma verified. Um, so if it don't pass, obviously it's not going to be in here. It's going to be junk. But um, it's all Sigma ver verified and um, basically what I do is I just get large amounts of silver and I melt it in my propane furnace and um, make it in a shot. Um, it's just easier to work with, easier to melt. Um, yeah, so this is basically what I do. So I got my trusty scale. If you're going to do, let's say, a one ounce pour, um, whatever it may be, round, bar, always put a little more than one ounce. Especially if you're using a crucible and torch because you tend to lose some um, in that process. So more than likely you'd be under that one ounce mark. So just make sure you're a little over And by the way, this stuff stinks really bad. Uh, I think I'm good there. So once you got the antique process done, you just put that bad boy in the dip. Get it all cleaned up and then I just do a second dip. So these are the things that I use for um, 3D sand casting. I use baby powder. I use a brush. That's to brush off the baby powder or the fine sands that I don't want on there. I use this little I guess a dental tool, but, or, yeah, I use this. <laughs> I use this. I use this to, you'll see. I use this. Um, this was a glove mallet, and um, I decided to start using it for this. You'll, you guys will see how it, is, how it works. And then I use this guy to break off the sprue, and this guy to take it out. And here goes the sand that I use. Um, I keep it in this container here, um, just so I don't kind of, I can manage, um, you know, what is spilled or whatever the case is. And 
and I'm using this round edge here, flatten everything. And once I'm done with this, what I like to do is I like to look through here and see if it's a big enough channel for the silver to go through here being where the end of this piece is. All right, so now we are done. We created the pouring channel. The channel so the gas can escape. And then we recreated the same channel on this side. Now for me, it's very important that when you connect these guys, that these channels line up. So you see the pouring hole? That's what we're trying to do. Because you want this silver, when you pour it through here, that it has somewhere to go and it won't cool too quickly before it enters, right? Um, my brother here um, was a big influence with me on all that. He was my good eye. I was looking at stuff with my crooked eye, and he was, was looking, looking at it with the good, good eye. <laughs> so um, I made a lot of stuff that I thought would pass um, to sell, and he shot it down. So uh, he was a good big help for mine or for me. And um, you know, with time of me bugging him every night at two, three in the morning, hey, how does this look? Every he decided. Night. You know, hey, why don't I just get involved with you and and get in with you? So I brought him along, and that's when we decided to start Prado Standard. And then Prado Standard is primarily a comment auction page. We do also do some post sales. We do some raffles on occasion, but mostly it is an auction page. And we do auctions twice a week, and. Um, yeah, basically we've been doing it for like since September of 2018. That's when we actually started making stuff really happen. And and um and also there were some pours that were made through Prado Sander and now it's poured by myself, mm -hmm. Wild Pig. <clears throat> um we just decided to use that name so we can have pours for that page. Um I also poured under um, Mountain Range Bullion briefly, and then now currently I pour under Wild Pig Pours. Um, you know, we do ship uh, worldwide. Um, we ship anywhere from Australia to Dubai, the UK, Canada, and all over the US. When Paul and Phil are not dealing with silver, they operate in Los Angeles, Pure Potential. Pure Potential is a batting cage facility for local youth who want to learn and be taught the art of baseball. These two coaches, both Paul and Phil, have done an excellent job in working with youth in the city of Los Angeles and teaching them an art that they grew up playing themselves. So as a child, I grew up playing baseball. It was the first love of my life and I loved to play it, loved to all day, rain, shine, didn't matter. What we do outside of pouring in the wild pig, um, we own an indoor batting cage in the Los Angeles area. And we picked this area because we're from the area and we wanted to bring something special to the area. Um, it's an area with lower income families, um, so we wanted to have something special for them to be able to come to be a part of because we got thousands of people coming through the door and they are a branch of our family and a part of us. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that they 
have something that they can come to and call home and feel special with the facility. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of lessons and a lot of trainings with um, the local kids um, and kids outside of the area. Um, you know, primarily I work with them, I don't know, 30 minute lessons or so. Um, I definitely talk to them more than baseball. Um, I talk to them about life and family and, and, um, and growing up and what to expect. And, you know, let's just say I got a 12 year old kid that's about to go to high school. I try to prep his mind for the next level of gameplay, things of that nature. Good job today. Coach Paul, play. as he's referred to by many of his students, spends time in specialized training lessons in teaching his students how to play baseball, how to swing a bat, what techniques to use. And this has shown some great success with many of his students. In fact, one student in particular, Cody, who has been with Coach Paul for several years now, has shown great progress. And his father, Brian, is grateful of Coach Paul. Let's hear from Brian about Cody's experience. We figured that the group sports would make a big difference and uh, help him tremendously. When, uh, when Coach Paul first met him, Cody was probably half the size that he is now. He couldn't catch, he couldn't throw, and nothing. He, he couldn't hit the ball to save his life. So with some training, uh, he got much better. And then Coach Paul decided that he was going to create a young team called Team Boom. And uh, phenomenal team. There was people like my son who was not so good all the way up to nationally ranked players. And uh, the, the family companionship. Um, it was incredible. He uh, he was treated like one of the kids. He uh, his skills. He uh, he started to shine. I remember one Christmas, all the kids got awards and and uh, stockings full of gifts and stuff. And that was the year that Cody got the most improved player. Um, I think I saw a photo of that. Still have the video of it. Um, on my YouTube channel. But uh, with uh, a lot of parents wanted everything, and some wanted tournaments, some wanted other things, and it uh, an incredible team was dissolved, and all these players went to all these different teams and and shined with the training that they got from Coach Paul. Um, We've still been coming to him for a few years now, and Cody's doubled in size and Gross, and, uh, and and put on some more weight. And Coach Paul uh, treats him like a family member. He's he's uh, I'm a little hard on him. He's hard on him when he needs to be, but he also teaches him. Uh, social skills, how to deal with other players, how to be himself out there, and how to believe in himself, I guess is the most important thing. And with that, Cody started his ninth grade in high school. He made the freshman team. He's been crushing the ball. He actually got to come up to the varsity team for five games as a designated hitter because of his hitting skills. And uh, we're real proud of him. And we uh, love coming here. I, uh, I tease him a little bit. You know, he's, uh, he's starting to kind of get a big head. But uh, we love him. He's done great things. And he, he treats us like family. So all I can say is great things about him. He's, uh, he's kind of bossy sometimes. And, you know, he set Cody on the right path. He's changed his diet, where he's supposed to be on his diet. He's, uh, Cody's getting everything he needs as per coach, his training, power training, 
and uh, we love coming here, and it's a great experience. He's a good guy. Don't believe all the rumors you hear. Here at the batting cage, I take care of all the outside stuff. I make sure all the machines are good to go. I do all the PRing on the outside. I do all the lessons, um, all that. And then my brother here, my partner, he can tell you a little bit about what he does. Yeah, so I do basically anything behind the scenes or the cash register or selling, you know, merchandise or whatever we got out in the, the floor here. Um, I also, you know, like when people come in to use the batting cages, set them up in the, in the different cages that we have here with the different speeds and, you know, make sure that they know the rules basically, you know, so they don't get hurt and whatnot and that's basically what we do you know we love what we do we love everything we do and um it's a it's great it's great basically we love working with people um you know whether it may be in metals it may be in um the batting cage it may just be in life friends family you know we 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 try to be good to everybody and love them all the same. For for anybody that's willing and wanting to do some pours themselves, feel free to um, reach out to me. I don't have a problem helping at all. Um, and we can just go from there. You know, I can let you know what things to buy, how to do it, you know, or, or if you do have any questions on it, we can go ahead and take care of that. Um, but other than that, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Done! <laughs> oh my god. You out, pig! Beautiful treasures. Such talents. Incredible. Absolutely beautiful.